Thank you to John Boy Boxing, John Hutchinson from Tiger Muay Thai is over there because we drilled that right hand consecutively for three months. We knew Pedro was heavy on the front leg, his chin was there to be hit, drop, bang, and that's all we drilled for three months and practice makes permanent. What did you make of the sort of booze at the end? Do you think maybe people thought it was done a bit sooner than it should have? That was the best stoppage ever. Me and that referee and Pedro are the three people in there. Pedro was done. I'm so glad he stopped it when he did because, listen, we all want to get paid and go home to our families. It was a great stoppage. You were saying for Pedro after the fight, he seemed obviously gutted for his reasons. Do you know what it is? Huge amount. I've just seen his wife and his, his coaches out there give him a hug and a kiss. Listen, this is a ruthless business. He's going back to SBG and John Kavner, who's a good friend of mine, and Connor and all these people that, you know, it's not ideal that you fight these people, but this is the game that we're in. It's, uh, it's prize fighting, so... You know, me and Pedro got matched up and now it's been left here and best of luck to him in his career. The last one for me, it's ruthless like you said, it's good to come out of it unscathed going into June. Probably a new face given there's a lot of new faces now you've started going into June. I'll be honest, I didn't really see too much this year. I was watching the screens thinking, fuck, it's wide open for me again. It really is. Uh, that's no disrespect to anyone else, I'm being deadly honest. So, I look forward to June and uh, another win. Brendan, it's a bit of a funny one with the booze, because they're not necessarily being you as the fighter, it's more the ref, but I guess as the fighter you take the run of it. Did you feel that maybe a little bit? <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I thought, is the 5,000 Pedro fans in here? I couldn't work out what the booze were, because it was a great stoppage. I'm not joking you, I was in there, I seen his eyes, Pedro was done, he should have been stopped earlier. Like, I don't know what the booze were all about, honestly, like, even when he stood up, he was gone, he was done, and it was a great stoppage. <laughs> No, as you said, obviously you want to get home, quick, quick knockout, but you were getting in your groove a little bit, the counter right was working. Is there any part of you that maybe frustrate that you didn't get longer in there or was it a case of just you don't get paid for overtime? My coach was saying to me all week, you're not going to bust a sweat in this fight, you're going to knock him out in one shot, maybe two. And I was like, fucking, I was like, chill out, mate. You weren't wrong. <laughs> they, they can see what they can see. And uh, yeah, we drilled that, like I say. We drilled that so many times and the last time we diligently worked on the right hand was for Bubba Jenkins and the same shot. I've got a very dangerous right hand and now I'm learning to set it up better and I'm drilling it better. And uh, yeah, they don't even know how good my wrestling is. Like, they think they're going to wrestle me, but it's it's a nightmare matchup for anyone in this division, it really is. Were the nerves any different walking out there obviously because of last time, first, first time getting to stop like that? Did you feel different coming out to the cage this time around? I'll be honest with you. It was so strange, that's these. There wasn't one single nerve tonight. Usually I'm a nervous fighter, like I'll be getting it and the butterflies will be going. And I was thinking to myself, at some point here, I'm gonna get nervous, I'm gonna get nervous. I was saying to my, uh, my manager here, I was walking just before the fight, before I went to the arena, I was like, I'm not nervous at all here. I said, this is gonna be the best performance of my life, this watch. Don't know, I just felt it tonight. Sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off. Tonight was that night, the weight cut went perfect, the camp went perfect, and that is Brendan Lockney in at 100%, and that's what I can provide when I'm at 100%. Uh, Brendan over here, you talked about that time off. When you got out here to fight week, did you feel like it had, you know, it had all paid off? Like, you know what, mentally I'm refreshed, physically the body's feeling it. Did it all pay off when you got to the cage? Well, results speak, speak for themselves, don't they? Uh, that was the best Brendan Lockney in. Um, and I don't make excuses for fights, but that's the first time I've been healthy in so long. That's the first time I've been a healthy Brendan, and I was so excited to show you all how good a healthy Brendan is. And I think I put the featherweight division and the world on notice again, like, Brendan's a serious contender, yeah. Sorry about that, they don't sponsor me anyway. Uh, <laughs> I, feel like, uh, I feel like people forgot about me after the knockout a bit. Like, oh yeah, Brendan, you know, he wasn't that good anyway. He got knocked out and I wanted to just show everyone that, you know, I was half considering, can I really do this anymore after that knockout? I suffered from it, do you know what I mean? I was knocked out 15 minutes, didn't know where I was, was watching the knockout back like, wow, that was weird. Imagine that in over 50 uh, contests. I've never been dropped, knocked out, anything. So I had to really like think, is this me anymore? Um, then I started hard sparring again, realised that the chimp still worked. And then, and then the rest is history, I just, bit down on my gum shield, got training, went to Thailand on Christmas Day. I started training for this moment on Christmas Day. So April 19th, I stand there in front of you over the moon. And then, uh, Brendan, uh, did you see Gabriel Braga's? I've just uh, seen it on the screen game. then. Yeah, yeah. amazing. probably warming up in the back. Uh, 
maybe a little too soon. It is just the first night of the regular season for the featherweights, but I think a lot of fans looking at the field, the two of you at the end of this thing. What are your thoughts? For I agree. Show? He looked very dangerous tonight. Shout out to Gabriel Vargas well because he's gone through a lot recently. Hell of a man, hell of a fighter to go through what he went through and come here and have a performance like that. Nothing but respect to him and well done Gabriel Braga and if it's me and him in the finals, who doesn't want to see that fight? And then a final question, obviously a lot building up to the comeback and getting back in the win column. What did the next 10 weeks or so look like as you prep for the next fight of the season? Um, is it 10 weeks? Because someone just said 8, so thank God it's 10. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Get <laughs> Someone just went, you got 8 weeks? I went, what? I thought it was 10. Um, well, first of all, we're going to have a few Guinness tonight. Yeah, we're going to have a sink a right few Guinness because it's been a it's been a hard camp and I've earned it. Um, I'm just happy, man. I'm just happy to get back in the win column. 15 knockouts in MMA. Who's got 15 KOs in MMA? I'm fourth in British history of MMA fighting. Just behind Connor and Bisping and them. I'm right up there with them. I think I'm, I might be the most active knockout artist that's not retired right now. Um, I've got the most knockouts in my division. Who doesn't want to see Brendan fight? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I got knocked out in my last fight, but I come back with a knockout. So I'm either getting knocked out or I'm knocking you out. So um, it's all action with Brendan. There was a lot. I'm not, I'm not even going to try and shit on anyone else, but there was a lot of boring fights tonight. Um, and me and uh, Braga come in and lit the show up. Brendan, great performance. I'm wondering, you were walking around Chicago a lot, doing a lot of running. What was your favorite part of the city in this experience? Oh, I love Chicago, by the way. I'm really excited. Hey, Chicago's, you know what it reminds me of? Like a New York, but less busy. And it's a bit like Manchester, where I'm from at home. It's like bricks and, and cold air and parks and grass and tree, like beautiful place. Don't leave till Monday afternoon. I've got my best mate here, I've got my manager, I've got my coaches, and we're all gonna have a good time because you know what? All these guys have sacrificed time away from their loved ones as well. Everyone's come with me for a full week, left their wives and kids, just so I can pursue my dream. Um, so thank you to them. Jose Diaz, Josh Gil Martin, Frank Hickman, and uh, John Hutchinson. So thank you to them as well. And one more for me. What are you gonna, how much are you gonna push the PFL to bring the playoffs to England? If you get there, um, that's not even crossed my mind to be honest. But uh, how good was London last year or year before 2022? It was it was great. And uh, who doesn't want to come back to England? Imagine the Manchester Arena, me and Gabriel Barga. Come on, I mean, who doesn't want to see that fight? So uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if the semis is already set. Um, is it set, Tony? I'm sorry. Is, is the semis set? The what? Like the semi-finals, like the. You know what, actually, you know what, yeah. hold that thought because last year I was talking the semi-finals after the first fight and got knocked out, so I ain't talking about no semi-finals, I'm talking about June, so let's just stay on that matter please because I ain't going too far ahead, one step forward and two step backs in last year, none of that again. South Dakota next. South Dakota, terrible place I've heard, but you know, we'll give it a go. <laughs> Brendan, I have one. Uh, you hear a lot of fighters say that... Um, you know, after a big win, it's not always excitement, happiness, it's almost relief. Can you relate to that or is it just happiness at this point? <clears throat> um, I, had to, I had to battle a lot of my own demons to get back in there. Uh, imagine, right, I worked my whole life to get a belt and then I got financially free with the money. So then I was like, and then I got knocked out. So then it's like, you have to kind of gauge what you're doing it for at that point. Um, and I wanted to do it to prove to everyone here and prove to myself that you can come back from a knockout you know, you can come back from adversity. And I'm so happy that I did. I'm so happy that I went back to training and I followed my dream further. Because guess what? We're only at chapter two or three. Brendan's got absolutely loads of miles in the tank. And I can't wait to show you what's next. Thank you, Brendan. Congratulations. Thank you. Brendan over here. As someone from Chicago, I'm happy to hear that you enjoyed the city. Um, I'm sure that others in the division, this was the version of you that they were afraid of. And so getting six points here is huge going into the second uh, part of this uh, regular season. What's your message now for the rest of the way going into the playoffs? I mean, my message was clear. My message was violent. It was just violence, wasn't it? It was just Brendan on full pelt. If I can stay healthy this year, because this is my fourth season now, and I know how hard it is to stay healthy for a full year, training camps, weight cuts, so I know how hard it is, so I'm not counting my blessings yet.
But what I will tell you all is, when Brendan's on fire and Brendan's full healthy, that's the version that you're going to get. So let's hope I stay healthy and we keep getting performances like that. 34 years old, 15 knockouts and getting better. How about that?